Welcome back folks again to the show. Got some good news, got some bad news for today. I'm going to start right off with the bad news, get it out of the way, and then we get on with the good stuff. And the good stuff's right here on the bench. The bad news is, you know, I was sick for a long time. I'm still sick. I still feel it, but I'm way better over it. But uh came in the other night and went in, sat down, started to watch gun smoke. I like old western movies and stuff. Sat down, started to watch TV. My wife's cigarettes were laying there. She started smoking again. I still hadn't smoked. And I kept looking at him laying there and, and thinking, you know, man, I wonder if it would still be good, I wonder, you know, if I choke or... So I got one out and lit it up. And it was good! Whoa! Alright, now for the good news. The good news is we're going to hear this Simon and Patrick tonight. And I was right about the uh, MSP 4100 strings, light gates, 0.012 to 0.054, that he sent those with the guitar. I can get the glare off of it so you can see it. And that's what it's getting. Now this guy, the owner, told me he tunes down one step, hold down from A440 standard pitch. That's the way I'm going to set the guitar up. You know, if I set it up for A440 pitch and he tunes it down a step, everything's going to change. The neck relief's going to change. The string action's going to change. The stress on the bridge is not going to pull up as high. Uh, everything's going to change and the setup's not going to be the same. Uh, so I'm going to set it up with these strings for uh, one step below A440 pitch. But first, I got to put the strings on. Before I put the strings on, I'm going to buff the guitar and polish it because I got fingerprints all over. We're going to do all that, buff it, polish it, put the strings on, and uh, I'm not going to glue the nut in or anything yet. Just uh, put the strings on. I'll bring you back then, and we'll take measurements to see, you know, where we are. He wants 564 on the low E12 fret, 464 on the high E12 fret. So. Uh, if it's not there, and I don't think it will be, we'll have to remove some from the saddle. I also want to check that nut action. I think it was a little bit high. I'd have to get my notes and look to see for sure, but I'm pretty sure it was. So I'm not going to glue the nut in just yet because we'll probably have to lower the nut action too. Anyways, I'll bring you back as soon as I've got all that stuff done. We'll have to work about 30 minutes probably, and then I'll bring you back and we'll get into setting this guitar up and see what it sounds like. It's been a long time coming, baby. So let's do it! So I'll tell you all about this little funky problem I had as we go along the way. I wasn't going to say anything about this, and I thought, no, nah, you guys probably need to know about it. A little incident that happened to me on PayPal recently. I won't mention the lady's name. That wouldn't do it. I don't hold her responsible for it at all. I hold PayPal responsible for it. So what happened was, this lady, she bought stuff off me before. Anyways, I get a get on PayPal one day and see where a lady had sent me 145 bucks. And then I get another 145 bucks from her. Yeah, I didn't ask any questions or anything. Well, the next day, I get up, log on to PayPal, and she sends me another 533 bucks I'm not saying what any of the funds are for or anything okay but on that day PayPal tells me she disputed all three activities and I must refund her money so I go you know the first 145 one click on refund start through the process it says the funds are going to be taken out of my account the funds by the way never did show up in my account because she put them on hold, PayPal put them on hold when she filed a dispute someone had unauthorized the, uh, the activities were done unauthorized by her she said and PayPal had put them on hold so the money never the money she sent never really showed up in my account yet it was saying it during the refund uh, transaction that the funds would be taken out of my account if I refunded it and I had to act before June 2nd so I thought about it a few days and I thought well I'll refund one of the 145's and I did that and it did not take the money out of my account by rights because the money never was in there uh, PayPal put it on hold because she disputed it, okay? No problem. So I clicked on the second 145, 
refunded it, same thing, it was not taken out of my PayPal account, but then I get a, a receipt saying that I paid like six dollars and something, I think it was, for uh, the account activity or some shit like that. So I had to pay six dollars and something, two times, and then just today I thought, well I'll go ahead and refund the the big one, the 533, I think it's what it was. And there again, it said funds will be taken out of my account, which they were not. But this time, PayPal charged me 18 bucks and something to refund this lady's money. You know, I got no problem with correcting mistakes, but I do have a problem when it comes to paying for someone else's mistake. I mean, it's totally wrong for me to have to spend over 30 bucks refunding someone's money that they, it was sent unauthorized by them. It seems to me that person that made the mistake should be the one to stand good to pay whatever fees it took to, to make those wrongs right. So this, you wanted to fill you guys in on that? That's just something I learned about PayPal that totally unfair. Now, you know, I was always taught, if you make a mistake, you stand good for it, <laughs> you know? So to me, it seems like the right thing to do would be for that lady to refund me my 30-some bucks, whatever it was. Because rightfully, she should have been the one pay for, you know, the transactions. Because I, you know, I didn't do anything at all, man. Didn't even receive the money. It was put on hold. Anyways, I want to show you guys, show that with you guys. Because if you use PayPal, it could happen to you. Who knows, man? It's just weird stuff. I thought you guys should know about it. Hope it never happens to you. Alright, I got the guitar tuned one step, one whole step below A440 pitch. We're going to measure the nut action first. I have a sixteen thousandths here, ten and a six. That's what I thought I remembered that being. I didn't even look at the notes, I remembered it. A little bit. Might be a little less than sixteen on all of them. That's good. I like to see 16 myself. And that, it's a little less than 16 from the first string. They're both under there. Oh yeah, quite a bit less. Well, okay, let's go down to uh, 16. Let's go down to uh, 10 and 2. The old rustic, ugly two. That's twelve thousands. That's more like it. Twelve thousands. Not actually. That's pretty low for an acoustic guitar. We'll see if it buzzes or not. If it doesn't buzz, it'll be okay. Third string's a little lower. The trash rod comes all the way back here. The adjusting head is just right there, man. Like right there in that brace. As the brace comes across here, the adjusting head is right there. But I want to come up here to the 14, 15, 16, 17th fret. Because we have some fall away back here on this guitar. It's not bad, but it has a little bit. And let me sit down where I can see. Just goes in there perfect, man. It's not lifting that string any whatsoever. Now this side will be a little bit tighter. And it is. It's less than 12. Yeah, I won't even go under there. Let me try noting the 19th fret. 
still won't go under there. I mean, unfortunately, remember it lifts the string. Well, let's experiment here a little bit. 17. Might be a little bit more than 12. On the 19th. Same thing. All right, it's very, very close to 12. It is 12 on the bass side, but not on the treble side. But that's I've seen that happen quite a lot before. All right, check string action. Low E at the 12th fret. He wants 564s. Yeah, there's a piece of plastic on that thing to keep it from rusting. It's folding right where I need to see. Four, five, six, sixty-fours. Four, five, sixty-fours. What does this all mean? It means we want to drop this one sixty-fourth. So we got to take twice that amount off of the saddle back here to lower to lower this. If you do this in thousands, that's what I usually do it in. See how many thousands that is. Right now, we're at ninety thousands. On the low E and seventy thousandths or very close to it on the high E. So if we want that to come down to eighty thousandths, that's a difference of ten thousandths. That means we have to take twenty thousandths off of this saddle. And man, that's going to be just about all we get from it. All right, I got to detune the guitar now. Take the saddle out. Mark it for twenty thousandths. That's double what we want the strings to draw. And put it back in and I'll bring you back. I'm not going to put you through that. I've got hundreds of videos of me doing it. So I'll bring you back when it's done, old one. One thing I might mention here too, another tip for you. When you got to loosen all your strings that loose, don't just stick a, a, a wrench on it, key winder, and loosen it all the way up. You want to go like the third one's still up the pitch. So you want to bring it down a little. Bring that one a little, that one a little, and then start all over and bring them the rest of the way where you need to be. Don't loosen it like that and then move on to the next string. Loosen it about halfway where you want to be. You know, if you if you would have if you were up to pitch and you started loosening first string all the way loose as you needed it, second one all the way loose as you needed it, third one all the way loose as you needed it, then you've got a ungodly amount of stress on three, four, and five on the entire guitar. It's twisting the neck. It's pulling up on your bridge back here in a funky manner. And uh, it's just not good for the guitar. So never do that. Just a tip for you there for free. <laughs> now we know we already have nut relief we're going to use. I don't think we're going to have any problem with any buzzing up here now, with the, even with it that low. So I'm just going to show you how I should knock that glue off of there. Hold on. Piece of rough sandpaper. Probably never find it. Yeah, I guess it's nice. Uh, let's knock this old glue off of here a little bit. So the new glue that did it right there. So the new glue can bite in. Uh, when you glue your nuts in, <laughs> well, I always glue. I always glue to the fretboard right here, okay? Because if you glue down in that in there, when you're getting ready to knock that thing away, there's a chance you could chip wood out of there. And by the, people, I've seen them, they put so much glue on the nut, man. It's not necessary. Take your nut. I'm going to use Tight Bond Original in this time. Uh, sometimes I use uh, CA glue. And right in the very center of the nut, I don't know if you can see that or not. That's all the glue you need, folks. Take your finger, spread it out a little bit. And that is all of the glue that you need for your nuts. That glues the nut to the fretboard and not the part of the neck back there. So when you get ready to knock that nut out, you put your block up here, you're knocking the nut that way. And, you know, that's a better chance that glue is going to break away clean right there than it is if you knock it, uh, if it's glued the other way. You know what I mean? 
Hope that makes sense to you. There's a wee little bit of squeeze out right here. I want to just get in there with the ice pick of all things. Make sure we're even with the sides of the fretboard. And that's it. It's perfect. And you, you make sure you got a good snug tight fit there and that's all you got to do I just wanted to mention that because so many people glue their nuts from the bottom side to the wood here and you shouldn't do that you should glue it to the fretboard and like I say it, it only makes sense when you knock the nut out that way that glue in this right here is going to be the glue that's uh, you know put pressure on to let go when you knock the nut out without chipping out a bunch of stuff and screwing up a bunch of shit just for another tip, same thing applies when you are putting on your new strings or tightening them up, whatever. And these are all loose. Now, I don't want to go cranking on this first and crank it all the way up to pitch without the others being, you know, near up to pitch. See, I got it almost up to pitch, and then I'll fine tune it now. Now, this is one step below A440 pitch, remember. Instead of an E, that should be a D. Here it is. It should be a A. G should be a F. Now because I had the saddle out, had it detuned, had the saddle out, sanded the saddle down 20 thousandths, I need to check everything again. So I got it up to pitch. I mean up to 440 minus one whole step. We got a 12 here, that's what we measured a few minutes ago. And you can hear that's exactly what it is. There's no popping ding noise whenever you pull the uh, thing out from under it, see? That third string is a little bit tight, but it's it's a little bit less than twelve thousandths, but it's good. So now we'll put on the old couple and check for neck relief. Still got a twelve here. I'm gonna note the seventeenth fret again. And I got you down here, sit down again where I can see it. That's exactly on the money, man. It is dead on the money. Does not raise that string. I don't know if I can reach that. Yeah. That's perfect. It should be a little less here. Yeah, see that 12 won't go. Oh, there it went under. It's lifting the string pretty good. You can hear it when I pull it out. Hear that? indicating that it's lifting the string but that's okay as long as it doesn't bust we're going to check that just in a moment check string action again now and we should be at 564 on the low E side 12th fret and would you look at boy that's just magic man that that works every time if you can just remember However much you want your strings to drop, if you want them to be 20 thousandths lower at the 12th fret than what they are, then you got to take 40 thousandths off of your saddle back here. And it works. It's dead on the money every time. 564, slow E, 12th fret. And 464, it's dead on the money. Of course, that changes over each string with the arch of the fretboard. I checked the arch of the saddle, by the way. And it is a 16, it matches the fretboard. I guess the only thing left for us to do to this puppy, look at that thing shine, man, beautiful guitar, is just uh, 
listen to it sing. It's about time, ain't it? About jolly well time, I think, old Lun. I checked the intonation already. It is there on the money, man. Yeah. Second string is a tiny bit sharp. That's a little bit flat there. Tuning. Second string is a little bit uh, sharp, but as low as that saddle is, I, there's nothing I can do, man. I mean, it's just barely got a tiny bit of string coming over the saddle, touches. The saddle's so low. And remember, we put the straight edge on here, and I went back to the bridge and over the bridge and touched the saddle, but it just, it might have lifted even a little bit. I mean, I, if you watch that video, one of the first ones on this guitar. You'll hear me say it just barely cleared, it's just barely enough. So there's not enough room there to intonate that second string. You can hear it a little bit. It was like four sets sharp, but that's as close as you're going to get it with that saddle in there that deep. Alright, let's listen to it. not the guitar. Every bit of the buzzing you hear is me and my screwed up hands. It's not the guitar. I checked every fret off camera and it does not uh, buzz anywhere. Even tuned down like this. Intonation's good. Thank you. 
I haven't been playing guitar, man. Rusty is hell. This baby's ready to go home. I polished it up, but I've got fingerprints all over it again now. Uh, you can look at the body there, how shiny and nice it is, minus the fingerprints that will just rub off. So there you go, folks. The Simon Patrick guitar is done. It's ready to, re to return to its uh, rightful owner. I can hook the strap back up on it now. I can hook the strap back up on it now the way it should be. And there you go. It's a done deal. And I think he'll be very happy with it. Uh, if he ever wants to tune this up to standard pitch, like I say, it's going to pull more neck relief into the neck, which is going to raise the strings. It's going to pull the belly up more, the bridge and the belly this area here with more stress is going to pull it up. That also is going to raise the strings. I don't know how much. And you've got to account for, you know, when you set a guitar up and send it halfway across the country or halfway you know, clear across the country or on the other side of the world, that setup's going to change. There's nothing you can do about that. It's going to change. Whatever I set it at here, and I send it, you know, 2,000 miles from here, the environment's different, the humidity's different, everything's different. And it's going to change a little bit. Usually it's not enough to hurt, especially on acoustic guitars. But one with so fine a setup as this, uh, hopefully it doesn't change, because, you know, the action is very low, and uh, lighter strings, and it's just a very fine setup, so hopefully it won't change, you know, after it gets there and is there for a month or two. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. I'm sweating like a pig, as usual. <laughs> Got the ACs running, but it's not the ACs or the temperature environment here. It's 73% uh, humidity here is one thing. And like I say, I'm just getting over the sickness. But anyways, I don't know how long this video is. Thanks. Cheers. See you very soon.